Hi guys, good day. By the way, my name is Jose Ampenas Jr. You can call me Sir Jiggs. And yeah, this is actually my first time to record a video tutorial, so please bear with me. So in today's session, we will be learning on how to illustrate quadratic equations. But first, we need to define what is quadratic equation. So when I say quadratic equation, it is also known as second degree equation because the highest power of the variable is 2. So I have here two equations in front of me, and I want you to choose from this two which one is an example of quadratic equation. So I'm giving you three seconds to think. The timer starts now. All right, so time is up. The correct answer is equation one. Why? Because based on the definition above in equation one, the highest power of the variable x here is two. And like in the second equation, the highest power of the variable x is 3. So furthermore, the standard form of quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. Where in a, b, and c are real numbers and a should not be equal to 0. And your x is your unknown variable. On the side equation, your ax squared is the quadratic term. So, in quadratic term, you can find the value of your a beside x squared. bx is your linear term, wherein you can find the value of your b beside x. And your c is your constant term, wherein you can find the value of your c. Well, definitely, your the value of your c are pure numbers. So, it means simple numbers without variables. So, by the way, just a quick heads up. There are actually quadratic equations in some books or even online sources that they are not actually using the letter x as their unknown variable. So if that is the case, in order for us to determine the quadratic term, we need to double check the exponents of the variable. In quadratic term, the variable has an exponent of 2. In linear term, the exponent of the variable is invisible 1. And of course, in C, or your constant term, it doesn't have a variable. Clear? So, at this point, I just wanted to let you know, I always wanted to really highlight this standard form of quadratic equation because I want you, as early as now, will know how to identify the values of A, B, and C in a quadratic equation. Because sooner or later, when we touch solving quadratic equations, and if you encounter equations that are not factorable and your last option is to use the quadratic formula, having that skill in identifying the values of A, B, and C in a quadratic equation will feel uh, will make you feel at ease because in solving the roots of a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula, all you have to do is just to substitute these values to the formula in order to get the roots of the equation. So same goes if you are tasked to calculate the sum of the roots, which is negative b over a, product of the roots c over a, or even the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac. If you know how to identify the values of a, b, and c, then definitely I am positive that you can solve it. Right, but you don't need to worry since this is your first time to to encounter or to learn about quadratic equation. Then I am here to help you out. So I have here an example: quadratic equations in standard form. So example number one: x squared plus three x minus eighteen is equal to zero. What is the value of our a here? How about our b? How about our c? Anyone? So the value of our a here, you need to think that a, you can find the value of your a in the quadratic term, which is beside x squared. So what is the value of our a here? It is positive 1, correct. Because in mathematics, if you see variables standing alone with no numbers, automatically its numerical coefficient is 1. How about the value of our b beside our x here? which is positive 3. Great. And how, how about our C? That is negative 18. So I have here another example to practice. 2x squared minus 7x plus 30 is equal to 0. What is the value of our A here? 
quadratic term, you can find the value for a. Beside x squared, that's positive 2. Linear term, beside x, the value for b is beside x, so it's negative 7. How about the value for c, that's in the constant term, that's positive 30. At this point, how about if you're given quadratic equations lacking linear term? So we need to say, if the standard form of quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, if we don't have the linear term, which is bx, automatically the format for this equation is ax squared plus c is equal to 0. So since we don't have the linear term, automatically your b is equal to 0. So an example for this is 3x squared plus 27 is equal to 0. What is the value of your a? Beside x squared, your quadratic term, that is positive 3. How about your c? Constant term, positive 27. How about your b? All right, that is 0 because we don't have any linear term. So second example, 4x squared minus 16 is equal to 0. What is the value of our a? Quadratic term, beside x squared, that is positive 4. How about our c? It is negative 16. Great. How about quadratic equations? How about quadratic equations lacking the constant term or the c? If this is a the case, then automatically your c or your constant term is not part of the standard form. So the format would be ax squared plus bx is, equals to, uh, is equal to 0. So since there is no constant term, automatically your c is equal to 0. So I have here an example. 2x squared minus 26x is equal to 0. What is the value of our a here? a quadratic term beside x squared. That is positive 2. Great. How about our, the value for b? Linear term. Beside x, that is negative 26. Question? So our c here, automatically it's 0, since we don't have constant term. Okay, second example. 5x squared plus 125x is equal to 0. What is the value of our a here? That is positive 5. How about our b? That is positive 125. And our c is 0. So at this point, um, I am very positive that whatever quadratic equations that will be given to you, whether it is in standard form, lacking linear term, lacking the constant term, you can now identify the values of A, B, and C. However, how about if you're given quadratic equations in factored form? So for those who are actually new to quadratic equation, this might be very challenging, but you don't need to worry. I'm here to help you out. So example, x plus 4 is multiplied to x minus 9 is equal to 0. As you can see, these are two factors. So if you are... Um, if you are given a quadratic equation in factored form, in order for you to get the values of A, B, and C, you need to expand the left side of the equation first. So therefore, we need to get the product of the two factors. How? That is where we need to use the FOIL method. So when I say FOIL method, it is a mnemonic for the standard method in multiplying binomials. Okay, let's try to get the product. And by the way, when I say FOIL, it is a mnemonic, so every letter has its uh, meaning. So F for first, O for outer, I for inner, and L for last. So we need to get the product of the first terms of the two factors. So that would be X and X. So X multiplied by itself, it's X squared. Great. How about our outer? So these are the outer terms of the two factors. So that would be x and negative 9. So negative 9 multiplied by x is negative 9x. i is for inner. So that would be the inner terms of the two factors. That would be 4 and x. The product of 4 and x, that is positive 4x. And lastly, your last terms of the two factors are 4 and negative 9. So what is the product of 4 and negative 9? It's negative 36. So once you get all the products of the FOIL terms, 
the, th the next step that you need to do is to what? To put all these terms into a new equation. So that would be x squared minus 9x plus 4x minus 36 is equal to 0. So since there are similar terms, you need to combine those ones. That would be negative 9x and positive 4x. So what is the sum? That's negative 5x. So therefore, the final answer is x squared minus 5x minus 36 is equal to 0. So now we now, uh, we, have, we now have the quadratic equation in standard form. So from quadratic equation in factored form, it is now in standard form. So, new, so now we can now identify the values of A, your B, and your C. So what is the value of your A here? It is positive 1 because any variable standing alone in mathematics with no numbers beside it, its numerical coefficient is automatically 1. And the value of our B here, that is negative 5 beside x. And our constant here, the value of our C, that is negative 36. Great! So again, if you encounter quadratic equations in factored form, the first thing that you need to do is to expand, expand the terms on the left side of the equation by multiplying the two factors. And once you are done and you're able to get or transform the equation into standard form, that's the time that you can now identify the three values, the a, b, and c. So how about if you are given quadratic equations not in standard form, nor in factored form? Okay. So example, 2x multiplied by x minus 3 is equal to 15. So the first thing that we need to do right here is, is really to expand the terms on the left side. So again, we need to multiply this 2. So after that, we need to move 15 on the left side because we need, to, we need to make sure that on the right side of the equation, it is 0. Okay? So the first thing that we need to do is to expand the terms on the left of the equation by multiplying 2x with x and negative 3. So 2x multiplied by x plus 2x multiplied by negative 3 is equal to 15. What is the product of 2x and x? That is 2x squared. Then the product of negative 3 and 2x, that is negative 6x. And copy is equal to 15. So we now have the quadratic equation in standard form. However, this is not yet final because we still have the number 15 on the right side of the equation. So the next thing that we need to do is to move 15 to the left of the equation to equate with 0. And to do this, we need to subtract 15 from both sides. If we subtract 15 on the right side, we also need to subtract 15 on the left side. So that is minus 15 and minus 15 here. So our final answer is 2x squared minus 6x minus 15 is equal to 0. So from quadratic equation not in standard form, now in standard form. So we can now identify the values of your a, b, and c. So what is the value of your a? That is beside x squared that it's, I mean, it is positive 2. How about our linear term beside x? negative 6. How about our C? It is negative 15. Great. You're awesome. So I am pretty sure at this point, if you're given quadratic equations not in standard form, well, basically, you need to double check the both sides of the equation. If there is something that you can expand, then do it by multiplying the factors. And make sure on the right side of the equation, or vice versa, or, or should I say, one side of the equation should be equal to zero. To wrap up this tutorial, you are now able to identify quadratic equations. You are now able to identify the values of A, B, and C if you are given quadratic equations in standard form, locking linear or constant terms, quadratic equations in factored form or not in standard form. 
So I hope you learned something from this tutorial. If you have questions, clarifications, or if you want to give feedback about this tutorial, you can leave your comment below. So again, thank you for watching. This is me again, Sir Jakes. See you in my next tutorial. Have a great day.